Hey folks, today I'm going to do maintenance on my 2015 Street Glide Special. Last year I was out on a trip, about halfway through, I noticed a small oil leak right below my rear rocker box. So I think it's probably time to replace the rocker box gaskets. I'm not just going to do it on the rear one, but also for the front one. That way they're both brand new because it's just a matter of time before the other one starts to leak as well. So I want to give a shout out to Randy with Bike Works in Urbana, Missouri. Uh, I was able to go to him and ask him a few questions what he thought it was, and uh, he told me to look at the rocker box. So appreciate you. And so let's go ahead and get into it. So as you can see, I've taken off the gas tank and the seat. I had some air deflectors that I took off. You may or may not have that. It was just keeping me from getting to that rear rocker box. So each rocker box cover has six bolts. They are seven sixteenths. They also have the option of an Allen three sixteenths, which I have a rocker box ratchet, and that is a three sixteenths Allen. Now there is a sequence to take these off. I'll throw a picture of what the service manual shows on how to take the rear and front off, but we will be starting with the rear. I'll be starting with the center left bolt. Next is the right center bolt. All right, next is the left top bolt. Also, I want to take time to mention, I did clean up the area, use some uh, an air compressor to, to blow everything out. So that's something important to do before you even take these rocker box uh, covers off. All right, next is the right rear. Next is your left rear. Next is your uh, right front bolt. All right, I want to point out that the bolts on the right side are longer than the bolts on the left side. So just keep that in mind when you're putting them back in. All right, I'm going to use a dead blow hammer to knock off this cover. Uh, these uh, covers have been on here for a while. I got over 60,000 miles, um, over 64,000 miles actually on the bike. So sometimes you can just hit them and they'll, they'll come right off, but sometimes they don't. Oh, there it is. lift up and there's the gasket that's what the inside of the cover looks like just I don't see any issues with this gasket looks pretty good that's from me knocking it off I think the issue is going to be the gasket underneath the housing I'm going to move on to the front rocker box. As you saw in the picture from the service manual, there's a sequence for this one. It's a little different. So I'm not going to show you that because, I mean, obviously you can figure it out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this taken off and we'll take a look at the gasket there as well. All right, I got the bolts out of the front rocker box. And that little clank will let you know it's time to take it off. And got to kind of be careful. I'm going to come take it off from the other side. Yes, it gets a little stuck. You gotta be careful, it will cut you. Right. And then just wiggle that out of there. Oh. Definitely gonna have to take it off from the right side. So. Like 
see if I gasket. it. A little stuck right there. But this one don't look bad either. As you can see, I've removed the spark plug wires. I'm going to remove the spark plugs. The reason for this is I'm trying to relieve compression. There needs to be the tension on the rockers needs to be relieved. I have some lint free cloth. It's going to stick down in there to keep from uh, any, any debris or anything getting down in there. All right, I want to show you that I raised the rear of the bike with the scissor jack and I got to put the motor in sixth gear. So I just need to turn. Okay, now I need to relieve the tension off these rockers. In order to do that, I got to rotate the rear wheel while it's in sixth gear. Or if your bike has fifth gear, that's what you need to be in. So I need the piston to be at top dead center. That means it's at its highest point in the cylinder bore. And what that also means is you're at base circle of the cam. You're not sitting on that cam lobe which pushes your lifters and then your push rods. So what's, what's gonna happen is your intake valve here and your exhaust valve here will be closed at the exact same time. Now there is something called overlap, which means these are open at the same time, but we need top dead center at compression stroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the rear wheel, which is going to be a little difficult by yourself. So there is your exhaust valve opening. Now it's starting to close. Intake valve is opening, starting to close. And just as the exhaust valve is getting ready to open, I'm gonna check it right now. Let's see. Okay, that one's, I can move it back and forth. This one I can't move, but I need a little, little bit more. Let's see. Okay, yep, see that? I'm able to move these rockers back and forth double check yep so the rocker for the exhaust is moving back and forth just fine as well as the one for the uh, intake valve so now i've relieved that tension that pressure I can take off this breather assembly. This is a 3 8 bolt. Now I'm gonna remove the rocker support plate bolts. There's four of them, they're half inch. I'm gonna leave the breather assembly in there because it'll just be easier to lift everything up at once and take it out. So there is a sequence for these bolts. The first uh, bolt is going to be on the left side and it is the rear and we're only going to turn it a quarter inch. Next is the right front bolt. Then next is the right rear bolt. Last is the left front. So I'm gonna keep going in that sequence I just showed you. Quarter of an inch, or excuse me, quarter turn each time. All right, now I got the uh, rocker support bolts loose. Sorry about the camera. Should be able to wiggle these out. Just 
little bit at a time. Eventually get it. There we go. Just a little bit of wiggling. And you can see why I left the breather assembly in there. Now while the uh, rocker housing is still there, it's a good opportunity to clean some of this up. I have a lint-free uh, cloth. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can mainly get it when you get it off, but I just figured I'd clean it up just a little bit push it away sorry about the camera shaking okay well I still got the uh, rocker box housing attached to the rear jet I'm gonna go ahead and set this piston at uh, top dead center of compression stroke so you can see the tensions off this one off that one okay now I'm gonna get the breather assembly off now that the breather assembly is loose I need to take off the four half inch bolts for the rocker arm support plates and it is sequenced too just like the rear so We'll start with the first one, which is this one right here. And you gotta do one quarter turn. Now that the bolts are loose, you should be able to just lift up, just make sure everything is unthreaded. All right, so I gotta take the six bolts, the 7 16 bolts from the front rocker housing so the first one is the right rear. I kind of already started on this one. I'm going to do these evenly. And the second one is your left front. And then your third, third one is going to be your left rear. And your fourth one will be the right front. Fifth one will be the back rear center, excuse me. And the sixth one will be the front center. And so I'll just continue in that order until these are all com evenly completely off. Okay, now I got the all the bolts out. Now I just need to uh, use my dead blow hammer and get the rocker housing off the front. That'd be a little difficult. There we go. everything up a little bit just I'll go back and do a thorough clean I'm just trying to get some of the excess oil off here I'm finishing up the rear rocker box housing by removing the six bolts just like I did with the front and then I'll be removing it all right now I got to get the rocker housing off so I'm gonna use the dead blow hammer again That one took a few whacks. Whoops. And there we got her. Trying to get all over the 
place. Yep. I can tell right there. That it's damaged right in here. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can kind of see where it's dry a little bit, but then there's some oil that leaked down, which was coming from here. So, yeah, definitely the gasket here, because you could see where it just started to, to roll off, and then it came down. Let me adjust it here. And it came down, leaked on down here to this point, because like I said, it was a slow leak. You can see it. It's dried up there. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, leftover gasket. So you need to get this off to get it ready for your new gasket. You obviously don't want to lay this down. So just kind of clean that off. I have a piece of uh, Scotch-Brite pad. Um, I've heard some people using uh, rubbing alcohol, but I'm gonna see how well this works. Seems to work pretty well so far. Wouldn't worry too much about any like marring or anything like that or scarring because it's, it's already got marks on it in, anyway. So I'm gonna work my way pushing away the pieces of uh, gasket away from the engine. I don't want it to get down in there. Um, actually, a, a good idea would probably be use a, like a towel, maybe a lint-free towel, hold it there, and then kind of scrape off. Actually, I think I'll do that. Okay, now that I've gotten the gasket residue off the head, I need to go back with the uh, brake cleaner on each of these bolt holes to get all the oil out, any extra Loctite that might be in there. So to keep it from getting everywhere, I'm using a lint-free towel and I'm just blowing it out. You can see there's a lot there. After the brake fluid, I'll take a air compressor and blow the rest of that out. So there's nothing left in there. So I'll go ahead and do this for all the bolt holes on the front and the rear head. Okay, now I gotta get uh, the gaskets off the underside of the gasket housing. I have a gasket scraper. Help me get that off. Isn't too bad. I can tell this one is really damaged from the, the black mark marking. Look at that dirt that got under there, so. I will, uh, Use a Scotch Bright pad, maybe some uh, rubbing alcohol to help get this off. See how much I can get off with this. It usually helps pretty pretty well. Get a good a good big chunks off of it, and then uh, go back with the Scotch Bright or combination of that and the rubbing alcohol. So seems to work pretty well. Then once I get through that, I have to go on this side and do the same thing. There's some gasket there to clean this up. Same for both. You'll see some gasket through here as well. That all needs to be cleaned up. Once that's done, I'll be working on the new breather assembly. This whole breather assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. Oops. There is the breather there, the bat, the breather baffle, umbrella valve there. Um, this is the breather cover. You can see there's a gasket in that, and there's a gasket in here that needs to be taken off. So 
get a closer look. That's gonna have to be scraped out. It's stuck on there really good. And uh, I bought some brand new breather assemblies. Comes with the bolts and everything. You just gotta put them together. And I will show you how to do that real quick. So after that's all cleaned up, what will happen is take the baffle, this is your umbrella valve, make sure you get that in there, all right, your new breather, you got to get it under those little ledges so don't worry about smushing it down all right so there you have it your brand new one whoops already has a fresh gasket on it as you can see right here and also there's a fresh gasket on this side so and there it is ready to install so I'll do that for both the rocker uh, support plates again you can throw these away um, I may keep these bolts, you never know. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much useless. I mean, look how bad that is. It was falling apart when I was trying to take it out. So I'm gonna clean all this up, get it ready to go, let you look at it and see how it looks when it's prepped. Okay, I've gotten everything cleaned up. <clears throat> the This gasket was really hard to, to get off. It actually uh, kind of stained the uh, rocker support plate there. <clears throat> I also cleaned up the bolts. Uh, one thing I would I would mention is uh, keep track of your bolts, the ones that are on the outside for the the uh, the cover here. Obviously, they, you want to put them back on the cover because uh, some of these are identical as far as. Uh, like here's one from the the cover and here's one that's from inside they're identical don't get those mixed up because the ones on the outside obviously will have had debris and so forth so <clears throat> and so one thing I want to mention is uh, this is the assembly excuse me the breather assembly baffle hole o-ring you need to take this out And just toss that, throw that away. <clears throat> Obviously, I'll have to clean that up and I'll put a new O ring in when we assemble this back in. <clears throat> also, you want to put blue Loctite on these bolts, all of them. Uh, another thing, I'm using Harley's assembly lube. That's what the service manual recommends. So, also, if you're going to do this, make sure you have a service manual. So, what I'll do is I'll take some of that assembly lube whoops and I will put it here where uh, the rocker arms or the ear is uh, hitting the valve springs so I'll put some there there and here where it hits the push rods one more thing <clears throat> I bought DK Customs rocker lockers. So I've already assembled them on all these except for this one right here. And you can see not much movement, more movement here. So basically all that's getting rid of that gap. It has a tapered end. <clears throat> you just put it in, <clears throat> put your the bolt 
factory bolt that comes with it. Use a washer that comes with the rocker lockers and the nut that comes with rocker lockers and you can just push that down. Eventually it'll feed right into that. So let's go ahead and uh, start with the front and we'll, we'll get this assembled again. All right, since uh, the last head we worked on was the front one, that means it's still at top dead center. So I'm gonna start with that one and then work on the rear. So first I wanna put <clears throat> a new gasket on. And as you can probably tell, this is not the OEM Harley ones. This is a James gasket. So how do you tell which one is front, which one is rear? Now the Harley ones will say front or rear on them, but um, there is a breather channel here. If you look down here, you can see which way the breather channel is. On the rear, it's different. So you could actually flip this and now this is the rear because it's covering that, that breather channel. So <clears throat> this, can, this will go in the front and it won't be lined up. That's, that's okay. We'll line it up as we put the housing on and then the bolts. Now for the rocker housing. Just need to make sure you line up the bolt holes, obviously. Again, blue Loctite. Just kind of want to get these started. So that O-ring that I took out, putting a new one in, I'm actually lubing it up with uh, fresh oil. So that'll go in there. Here you can see the breather channel on the rear. So putting the gasket on, covering that breather channel. Now for the Rocker housing. Again with the blue lock type. I'll double check the gasket, make sure. Yep, yeah, that's good. Should come, should line right up. Again, I'm just getting these started. A little hard to get to back here. Before I torque this down, I want to make sure that uh, my support plate, my rocker uh, support plate bolts are going to go in to the holes evenly. I don't want it to create any shavings, so to speak. Okay, the uh, six bolts for the uh, rocker housing. There is a torque spec of 135 to 155 inch pounds. And again, you got to do that sequence, the same one you, you, you use to take them off, you got to put them back on. So this is the first bolt. So something I wanted to add is that uh, some of these 7 16 bolts for the rocker housing is hard to get to in the, on the rear rocker. So <clears throat> uh, Harley, uh, recommends a dog bone it's what this is right here it's like in the little adapter uh, getting hard to reach places um, that's in the service manual manual says to use one of these so if you those are really hard to get get to so just need one of these 
Okay, service manual says to put some uh, some of this assembly lube, which is super stringy. We gotta put it on the push rods. You see how stringy it is, but it's definitely not going anywhere. And then also back on the top of the valve springs. This way they're not marred or anything like that. And I'll do it for the back as well. Okay, now I'm gonna drop in the uh, Rocker box support plate. Should drop right in. I'll get these started, these bolts started. They have blue Loctite on them. I'm not going to tighten down the uh, the breather assembly just yet because there's a bleed down process that needs to take place <clears throat> and that'll that'll take a little bit of time okay now I'm going to torque the four half inch support plate bolts and that is 18 to 22 foot pounds also have a, a dog bone it's half inch because it's a little hard to get to uh, one of the bolts here just because it's so close to the frame and other stuff is in the way. Again, remember the sequence as to how you tighten these bolts like I showed before. The bleeding process has completed and one way to know that is like before you're able to move the rockers back and forth. So now I'll evenly screw down the bolts for the breather assembly. Torque spec on these bolts, these are 3 8 um, is 120 inch pounds to 150. Okay, now I need to Put this cylinder on overlap so the rear is at top dead center or base circle of the uh, the can so let me rotate the wheel and there you can see that the uh, exhaust valve is open now it's coming down. And just as the intake valve is opening, this should be on top dead center. <clears throat> the rear should be on top dead center, I should say. So now it's time to work on the rear. All right, just like before, put assembly lube on the push rods and then the valve springs. So I am uh, got everything together. Slide it in. This is gonna be kind of tricky. Uh. I got it. Okay. Everything just kind of falls into place. All right, this is uh, 18 to 22 foot pounds. Remember, there's a sequence. The first one is left rear, 
and it's the second one, third one, and the fourth one. Okay, the support plate half inch bolts are torqued. Uh, I need to wait for that bleed down process. Once that is completed, I'll go ahead and torque down the breather assembly. That's going to probably take 15 20 minutes. So while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and get the rocker box cover gasket in place and then we can go ahead and put the cover back on. All right, here's the rocker box cover gasket. Just remember that the loops on each end are on the left side of the bike. So We'll go on like that and I'm going to go ahead and do the left even though we're waiting on the bleeding process and that's this one or turn this way now I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on And blue Loctite, blue Loctite on the bolts. Uh, the longer bolts go on the right side. And the shorter ones are on the left. Just make sure everything's lined up. And just get these started. And again, yeah, there is a sequence, just like we took it off. Same sequence to put it back on. So the rocker box cover is 15 to 18 foot pounds. So I'm gonna have to use the old dog bone again. And again, we'll go in that sequence. Start with the center left, then the center right. All right, the rear has bled down. So I'm gonna go ahead and Torque down the breather assembly, assembly, which is 120 inch pounds, 156 inch pounds. Last one. So again, torque in sequence. Start with the center on the left. 15 to 18 foot pounds. All right, that completes the uh, rocker box gasket replacement. I just want to note that I did put my spark plugs back in, uh, torqued those 12 to 18 foot pounds, and I got my bike out of sixth gear. I have it in first right now. Now I'm just going to put on the gas tank, air deflectors and the seat. All right, folks, that's it for this video. Overall, the job really wasn't that bad. The most tedious thing about the job was having to clean all the bolts and the bolt holes, but you got to prep for the gaskets, and it's very, very critical that you clean all the oil out of the bolt holes. You don't want to create any pressure from that oil. You won't get a good torque on those bolts. But started the bike up, runs great, runs smooth, I still need to test ride it. I'll take it out on the interstate, probably put 100 miles on it and get it up to a certain speed, you know, 80 miles an hour or something like that, uh, just to really test out those gaskets, let the bike get hot, make sure that I have a really good seal. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and always rip the ride. See ya.